The Receiving and Distributing Subcommittee can report the following cargo has been sent for London. 18,000 pounds of corned beef. 3,686 pounds of dripping. 77 pounds of golden syrup. 818 newspapers. 1,308 tins of cheese. And 321 housewives. Sorry, was that 321 housewives? You learn something new every day working on the QNZ 100 project. A housewife was actually a little sewing kit given to soldiers to help them fix their uniforms. Needle thread, extra buttons. Distant Lines was the major exhibition we held here in 2015. It was a really integrated exhibition across all of our exhibition spaces. Uh, we had over 50,000 people come through the exhibition over seven months. History Pin is a geolocation platform uh, which allows communities to start collections of content and to upload their digitised content and pin it to a map of the world. So we have uh, used History Pin as a great community engagement tool to, uh, to encourage uh, regional participation uh, in the commemoration of World War I to help us find content all over Queensland. The regional workshops have been a really important part of the QNSAC 100 project. We've had about 19 regional workshops so far across the state and uh, some of them have involved white gloves experiences, so original objects are taken so people can view them and touch them. Conservation clinics as well have been an important part of helping people identify and preserve their uh, historical material. So they've been really popular with um, just communities but also with school kids uh, who have really appreciated the opportunity to see and touch 100 year old items for the first time sometimes. The Soldier Portrait Digitisation Project has been one of the really big achievements of the QNZ 100 project. So over 30,000 uh, soldier portraits published in the Queenslander Pictorial Supplement have been digitised. It represents about 50% of the soldiers who enlisted from Queensland. We know that uh, 57,705 people enlisted. Uh, so it's a wonderful record and quite unique in Australia. The great thing about it is that it can be used in so many ways as a full data set, but we've also partnered with the National Archives of Australia to share that data and to link our soldier portraits with the service records and complete that circle. Discovering stories of Indigenous service has been a really important outcome of the project. We now know there are about 285 Indigenous Queenslanders who served during World War I and we have um, about 140 soldier portraits of those fellows and in some cases it's the only portrait in existence. For many Queenslanders the impact has been quite personal. People have discovered or rediscovered their, their loved one, their ancestor. One lovely one happened as a result of a blog story we posted uh, about an Indigenous soldier called Percy French who was actually from New South Wales but came up to Queensland and trained at the inaugural training camp. His photo appeared in the Queenslander and Percy's blog was published on our World War I blog and days later a lovely comment appeared uh, from his great niece who essentially wrote him a lovely heartfelt letter. Uh, it was just beautiful. Dear Grandfather Percy, I'm your youngest brother's youngest granddaughter. 100 years ago, you committed your life to serve Australia. We have not forgotten, and soon we will gather at your graveside to pay our deepest respects. When my son was born, and the nurse called him Percy, something stirred in me and I started searching. Grandfather, I am listening, and we are coming. You might be familiar with Edgar Towner, who was one of the 
people awarded a VC in Queensland during World War I. He had a sister called Greta uh, who joined the Australian Army Nursing Service. The uniform was used as part of the Spirit of Anzac Centenary Experience local community zone exhibition in Mackay. Lo and behold, the Australian War Memorial saw it and decided to undertake a full restoration of it. The purpose of QANZAC 100 is really to create a digital legacy. And so we've been able to do that through the acquisition and digitisation of collections from all over Queensland. But it's also given us the opportunity to identify and understand much better what we already have in the library and to improve the description of those items and to add metadata which just makes them even more discoverable. It's been a great opportunity to dismantle some of the mythology and, and to reach people uh, in ways we haven't been able to before. So it helps us understand right now how we remember and why we've commemorated. We know that some untold stories have finally been revealed and we've been able to commemorate people, honour people uh, in a way because we now know who they were and we've been able to honour their service.